Hello guys and welcome back to your girl's channel. So I'm going to be showing you a highlighting and contouring routine or video for beginners. So if you want to see exactly how it is that I achieve this, please keep on watching. Before we get started. No, but for real, before we really get started, I'd like to mention two things. I didn't mention every single product I used in the video. I mentioned some, but everything will be listed down in the description box based on its category. And two, already have my foundation on at the beginning of this video. And I see how orange it is, but this is a highlighting and contouring video. So, I already have my foundation on. Started with the um, highlight and contouring. I would like to mention that it's easier to do your eyebrows in eye shadow off camera. I did not mean to say off camera. I meant to say do it first. I was just in a rush and I misspoke. So every time I say off camera, I mean first. Just so you won't have foundation and powder and stuff in your eyebrows when you're trying to do them. And then you won't have any fallout on your face makeup when you're doing your eyeshadow so for beginners i would recommend to do your eyebrows and eyeshadow off camera can y'all be quiet Sorry. highlighting is meant to bring out certain parts of your face and that's usually done with a concealer that is one to two shades lighter than your skin tone personally i have found that three and sometimes four shades lighter of a concealer is too light so I was just suggesting between the one to two shades lighter than your skin tone you can either do one or two things with highlighter you can either elongate your face if you have a more rounder face shape or you can either make your face wider if you have a more longer face shape so to elongate your face if you do have a more rounder face shape we'll take the concealer all the way straight now from the beginning of your eye and then you would make a triangle shape all the way to the corner of your eye and if you want to widen your face if you have a more longer face shape you would do the same thing bring it down the side of your nose but you would elongate it all the way towards your temple this way it gives you more of a widening effect and it doesn't elongate your face too much for me personally i do have a more of a longer face shape because i do have a bigger forehead so i like to take my concealer out all almost all the way out to my temple but i don't take it all the way out to my temple i just end it right before where my eyebrow ends I highlight underneath my eyes, on my chin, down the bridge of my nose. Make sure to keep that really straight because that's where we're starting to nose contour. On my forehead and above my lip. I don't know what you would call that. The cupid's bowl area, but I make sure to connect both of my eye highlights right there. And quick tip, if you don't know how to nose contour just yet or if you haven't mastered it yet, I would suggest taking the concealer down the sides of your nose, making sure it's as straight as possible. And that if you don't know how to nose contour just yet, this has helped to give you the illusion that you did contour your nose, but you really didn't. You just reverse contoured. Now, while our concealer is getting tacky, aka drying, we are going to move on to contouring. Now, contouring is meant to push back certain parts of your face, so we are just going to create some shadow, cut the cheeks, decrease the size of your foreheads, get rid of that double chin, all that good stuff. If you have more of a rounder face shape, to elongate your face with contouring, keep the contour on your temples and don't take it too much onto your forehead because then if you do, it's just going to make your face look even more rounder. If you have more of a elongated face shape, keep the contour on your forehead and focus a little bit less on the sides of your face, aka your temple. This way it'll give you more of a rounder face shape. Moving on to contouring your cheeks. You can either cut your cheeks or cup your cheek. Now, for me personally, I do either or. It doesn't really matter. It's all up to my mood. So if you want to cut your cheeks, just go ahead and draw a straight line. And if you're going to cup your cheek, go ahead and create a curving line like the Nike Swoosh sign. Like the Nike check mark. That's what you're going to do to your cheek. And if you don't even know where to begin to contour, go ahead and sucking your cheeks this is going to give you kind of a little guideline on where to contour but i find it easy that if i just picture an imaginary line going from the middle of my ear down to the corner of my mouth i just follow that line halfway toward the corner of my mouth and then if i'm going to cup my cheek i just go ahead and create that swoosh to blend i like to use a damp beauty blender and if you can't afford a beauty blender or if you just don't want to go out and spend twenty dollars for a beauty sponge um real techniques makes a really good one it's about five dollars and there are packets of beauty wedges they come in um packs of three and i've seen them go up all the way to packs of 50 
so you can those are really good but those are disposable and they're really cheap they're like they range from like three dollars up and they come in packs so so when blending i always make sure to start with my concealer because that's been on my face the longest and it's um tacky we let it get a little bit more tacky so we can get more coverage from it jackie i know thank you sis when you're blending out your concealer also make sure that you are using pressing motions and you aren't you aren't going in and rubbing and scratching. Make sure you're using a very light hand and you're using pressing motions so that way you aren't disturbing the foundation that's underneath. I go ahead and blend out my highlighted portions of my face and then I go ahead and move into my contouring, which I don't like to use a beauty sponge because I just I don't I don't like to. I go ahead and use a small stippling brush. This is the Coastal Sense BRC. S54 brush again it's a small stippling brush and when I'm blending in my contour I always make sure when I'm blending out my cheeks to blend out in an upward motion in a little circular motions keeping that contour right where I place because if I blend it out lower than that I'm gonna have a five o'clock shadow and we don't want that sis and last but not least don't forget to contour your jawline I don't know why I do it last I just I just always do it last it's just always last at the very end, if you feel you've added too much highlighter or contour, go ahead and go over those parts of your faces with the tool you used to apply your foundation with. And I use my beauty sponge, but I use the butt of my beauty sponge to apply my foundation. So I just go over my entire face just to make everything mesh and just make it all nice and, you know, shameless. You know what I'm saying? Now setting. There's so many different options out there. There's pressed powders, there's loose setting powders. But for me personally, I like to stick in between a translucent powder or a yellow base powder. For this tutorial specifically, I'm using my Sasha Buttercup and this is a yellow base powder. Now a good affordable translucent powder is the Airspun Co is the Cody Airspun powder and the extra coverage translucent one. So I just go ahead and set my under eyes or all the parts that have highlighted. And before we do any of that, I want to prepare my beauty sponge or the tool that I'm going to be using underneath my eyes. So for this, I'm using a beauty sponge and I make sure I go into the setting powder and I cover quite a lot of the beauty sponge with the powder and then make sure to blow on the beauty sponge so that way I have an even application of powder when I go in to set my under eyes. And once I know I've got my beauty sponge ready to go, I go ahead, before I even apply the powder, I go ahead and blend out all the creases underneath my eyes while looking up and while I'm still looking up, I apply the translucent powder. So I make sure to hit my under eyes specifically and then I go in and set the rest of my face. Once I've set all the parts of my face that were highlighted, I like to go in and press the powder into my skin just to make sure that once again everything is set because I find sometimes that when I go in with my big old fluffy brush to dust the powder away, sometimes certain parts of my face aren't set properly so the brush skips and then it's just a whole mess. I gotta go in and put more powder, yada yada. So just to avoid all that, I just like to press the powder into my skin. We're moving on to setting the entirety of the face. I'm just going to be using a powder foundation. And for this, I use the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte in the color 800 Cocoa. Taking it on a big fluffy brush. Every liquid needs to be set with the powder unless it dries matte. It's gotta, it's gotta be set. It's gotta be set. I just go ahead and set the rest of my face using pressing motions. And once I know that every inch centimeter millimeter of my face has powder on it i just tap off the excess of my brush and i go in circular motions meshing everything all together i always clean up my contour but i don't like to use my setting powder that i use underneath my eyes because i always when i go in to buff it out it never buffs out all the way and i'm always left with that line of demarcation and sometimes in pictures if i turn to the side i have a little bit of flashback right there so i don't do that I like to go in with my Laura Mercier, the medium deep translucent powder, and that's what I use to set. And because it's a darker translucent powder, it is going to cut my cheeks, but it's not going to give me flashback. Once we're done setting our face, we're going to go in and contour a little bit more with our contour powder and our bronzer. Our contour powder does the same thing as what a regular contour does. 
it just creates a shadow gives you more definition but a bronzer is supposed to make you look sun kissed it's supposed to make you look like you've been in the sun for a little bit for just a couple minutes not too long it's just supposed to add more color back to your face bronzer is sometimes more orange based and it has more, and it's more rich in color and it's more warm tone and a contour powder is cool tone and once we are done with all that we go ahead and apply blush highlight and then we move on to setting our face with a setting spray make sure you set your face with a setting spray for this i use the over cosmetics fixing spray now any setting spray is fine and if you can't afford setting spray put some water in a spray bottle and just spray your face but do this lightly i do this personally when i'm on the go and i forget my um setting spray it works really well but don't put too much water on your face Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any further questions, comments, or concerns, or just little techniques that you guys have picked up that I might not know of and you want to share, leave them down in the comment section below. And for love and makeup and all things girly, please subscribe. And stay tuned for my next video. Bye guys.